Of all the skills you could possibly learn with Google Sheets, there is one that stands out for being so incredibly simple, but also incredibly powerful, and that is the pivot table. Stick with me in this video. We'll learn what a pivot table is, how to create it, and most importantly, how it can turbocharge your spreadsheet skill set. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video, we're going to be looking at creating pivot tables with Google Sheets. Now, like I said in the intro, this is one skill that is incredibly easy to learn, but also incredibly powerful. Not just is it powerful, but it's actually highly desirable. So I remember one time I was actually interviewing for a job where the majority of the job was working with spreadsheets. They didn't care if I could build macros. They didn't care if I could run statistics. What they cared about was could I create and use pivot tables? So incredibly powerful. And I want to show you all how to work with these pivot tables today. So first off, what even is a pivot table? A pivot table is a way of organizing our data grouping like data together, showing comparisons. You'll really see once we get into the demonstration. So let's start off with this. We've got a blank data set. And unfortunately, I don't remember where I got this from. It was a while ago, or I would be giving credit where it's due. But I have this data set. And basically what it looks like, what we've got here is we have got some different columns of data. And what it looks like is we're looking at sales data. So we've got the units sold. We've got the value of the total purchase. We've got what district uh, the sale happened in. We've got the team that sold it. We've got the date and then number. And presumably number is just uh, what number item on the list this was. So just looking at this, if we were a manager, yeah, we could come down to the bottom of the table and we could do some kind of auto sum function to see the total value of sales, but that's really about it that we can do with the data at this point. We can't really see did the East District have the most or the silver team or what was the value for the silver team within the Eastern District. We can't really see that and we don't want to go through here and calculate each of these by hand. That would not be fun at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the columns of data that we want. We're going to go to insert and what we want to insert here is a pivot table. Now it's going to ask you, do you want it on a new sheet, existing sheet? As far as the calculations does not matter at all. Uh, but just to keep things a little bit more uh, easier to look at, what we're going to do is we're going to put this on a new page. So what we have here, we've got rows, values, and columns. And what I like about Google Sheets is it kind of is already giving us a guide as to what goes where and how things are going to look. But in the event we forgot what we were doing or we didn't really know, uh, Google actually has this tutorial here for you through their uh, their editor page but we're going to walk through it so you understand it anyways. What we've got here is rows. Now, rows are going to go up and down. Think of this as what are we looking at? What kind of data do we want to view? And then the other things, the columns and the values, think of that as what do we want to see about that data? So let's suppose that we are a manager again, and we are looking at which of our districts performed the best. Well, we can come to rows. And what you'll notice is it's going to give us the option of selecting based on those headers that we had in the original data set. So that's why it's important to always make sure that you do indeed have those headers. We're going to go with district. And what you'll see is it pulls up the districts, east, north, south, and west. Now, the key here to understand is that it is looking through this list. And any time it finds a unique value, that is what it is pulling. So if we have 13 east and 14 west, it's just going to pull east and west, right? It's not going to pull the same thing multiple times. If we threw a southwest in there, it would pull that data for us as well. So we are looking at our four districts. What do we want to know about those districts? Well, what we want to know about the districts is going to go into our values field. So what is the total value that was sold by each district? And this is a basic pivot table. It's incredibly simple. It's easy to understand. We've got the value broken down by each district. So just with that, think how much time you saved versus trying to go through here and tally up how many sales were in the East District and hoping you didn't make a mistake and hoping you didn't count the same thing twice or skip one just right there incredibly valuable but that is like I said the 
most basics of what we can do with these pivot tables, we can do so much more. So what we've got here, we have again our districts, but let's suppose we don't just want to look at our districts. Let's suppose that we also want to look at the teams within those districts. So what we can do in that circumstance, we can come over to our columns and we can add in our teams. Again, blue team, green team, red team, silver, and the grand total. So think of this, the district could be a location, right? East, north, south, and west. So of all of the locations we have, that is our districts. But let's suppose within each district, we've got different shifts or different teams. Maybe our blue team is from zero in the morning to six at night, or sorry, zero in the morning to six in the morning. Green is from six to 12, red's from 12 to uh, 1800 and then silvers from 1800 to 2400. Let's just suppose they're different shifts. What we want to know is not only which district is doing the best, but is there some kind of a trend? Which team within each district, what shift schedule seems to be doing the best? So what we're doing, we're putting that across the top as our columns. And what we're going to put in this values is obviously the value. So not only are we looking what did each district cell. So if we're going across this way, we can see the grand total for the Eastern District is 3618. But if we look down this way, what we can see is the blue team, regardless of what district it's in, the blue team in general has that 7464 uh, dollars worth of sales. And what we can see is that, wow, it really looks like across all the different districts, the blue team is outperforming. And then out of the districts, it looks like the West is outperforming. So what we can really see there is just breaking it down by a lot of different categories. One other thing I will show you because sometimes this can look a little bit confusing and you've just got all this data thrown at you all at once. Let's go ahead and let's remove some of that because I'm going to show you a different way of visualizing things. So we're going to remove those values. We are back here. We've got east, north, south, and west. What if we didn't want it to look so cluttered? Well, what we could do is instead of adding our teams across the top here, we can actually add them as a row. So check this out. We're going to go ahead and minimize each of these. So it's uncluttered. It's out of the way. We've got all of our districts, but what we've done is we've built those teams in underneath the districts. So we want to go ahead and add back in our values. And what this does is it gives us a breakdown. Now this is really cool if you're designing something for a manager, because what they can see is they can see their total sales right off the bat. Um, and what they can see is we've made this $26,244. We can also look and we can see the total by region. But then if we wanted to dig a little bit deeper into it, we could click on that region and it would bring up the teams within that region. If we don't want to look at it, we just go ahead and hit that minus sign. So once we've got that, another thing I want to show you is that we are not limited to just using the basic data that we had in our original data set. So if we're looking here, again, we are a manager, we're looking at this and we're saying, you know what, um, this dollar value is pretty cool, but this is just the total dollar value that each uh, team was selling. What I really want to know is how variable were these sales? How consistent are my different teams? Well, what I can do is instead of summarizing these by the sum, I can do the standard deviation. So how much of a deviation is there in these sales? Another thing that I can do here is the average. What is the average sale by team? And I know this isn't a statistics lesson, but keep in mind when you're doing the average, that is very susceptible to large numbers. So if I sell $10, $10, $10, $10 $15, $10, and then I make a $1,000 sale, my average is going to get skewed uh, pretty significantly. On the flip side, if I make a $10 sale, $10, $10, $15, $10, $10, I make a $1,000 sale, instead of doing the average mean, what if I did the median? That is going to give me the actual number in the middle of that data set. So it's going to be more resistant to those extreme values. But again, this is not a statistics class. The important thing that you need to know is that what we're doing here is it's going to be giving us um, a variety of different options to customize based on what we're looking for. You can also do um, a couple of other things. These count unique, right? So how many unique values are there, right? If we're selling, let's suppose we're selling five different products, right? 
um, how many unique products were sold, or is one team just basically selling the same product. You can really customize this depending on what you're looking for, and it's very intuitive to use. So the key takeaway here that I want to leave you with is number one, creating that pivot table is very easy. You just select all your columns, you go to insert and pivot table, and then once you get there, the category that you're looking for goes in your rows and what you are trying to compare regarding that category goes into your values. And again, you can adjust it, you can customize it, but that is definitely the basics of how to get started with pivot tables. If you've got any other questions regarding either pivot tables or what you want to see in general with Google Sheets, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.